If you like Japanese maples, get ready. Aloha, y'all, and welcome to the 10 at 10. Hey, y'all, I'm Tim. That's my brother, Matt. We release 10 new trees every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And that's what we're talking about today. 10 of actual 20 trees getting listed to check your weekly email out. Sometimes we even release trees on Thursdays. This is a good one. Today, we're going to start things off alphabetically with Asayaki. Y'all, Asayaki, this is a really cool selection by our good friend, Neil Fasillo. Some people may know him as Neil Ramsey. This plant is really cool. It has a weeping habit. It's got a little bit of a purple nail to it in the early spring. And if you push this tree out with some sunlight, you get some nice yellow colors on the weeping yellow lace leaf. Yeah, we've actually been producing this one at Buckholtz Farm. Talon likes it a good bit. There's some larger ones out there. It's turned out to be a great plant. We've really been impressed with it. Uh, Asayaki really brings it. This is a great one for the container garden. Uh, again, from being introduced down in Atlanta, Georgia, this is a great heat tolerant plant. Excellent all around introduction. And when you get some shades of yellow on it, it really is quite spectacular. It pairs so well with so many other Japanese maples because of that. I do like that purple border of the early spring too. It just adds a little bit more something ornamental to every single leaf. Now, Talon, the reason he loved this plant was it has a consistent fall color and it can give you like a peachy pink red, which is outstanding in the fall. And it's very consistent for him every single year. Uh, for us, this plant is just a rock star each and every uh, part of the season. It's a tree to definitely try out in your garden. New, you don't find it that often in the nursery trade. Check it out today on MrMaple.com. Guys, it is the tenant 10 for January 9th. It's cold out here. Everybody asks, hey, when do y'all quit doing tenant 10s? Is there a part of the year where y'all stop doing it? They keep going. Tenant 10s happen all year long. Guys, today we're bringing back Gold Digger. So Gold Digger happened because we found this tree in a customer of ours yard. We were doing a grafting class and he said, I've got a yellow tree in my yard. We said, that's pretty cool. We eventually went there, grafted it. And Laddie Munger, who found this tree said, y'all can put a name on it. And oddly enough, Matt and I were riding around in cars, listening to the radio, and we said, Gold Digger. That's the name for this tree. Everybody kind of smiles when they see this one. It's a fun plant. Uh, some great sizes on these Gold Diggers here today. Uh, really interesting. Going into winter, you'll get a little bit more red tips to this kind of apricot yellowish color. Later into the winter, it's more of a bright yellow. So the bark continues to change throughout the season. Uh, people will even say going into winter, it looks like a coral bark because it can get pretty red all the way through it going into fall. Really showy though. I think the best time is between now and early spring. It'll just continue to get more and more light yellow going on. Uh, this tree really impressed us too because even the older growth of this tree was still a very nice yellow shade. Uh, the tree that we grafted from was about a 20 year old tree at the time. So it's been around a good bit to, to evaluate. Now I also love that in the early spring, Gold Digger gives you a blushing of pink over top of that light green foliage. So it actually comes out with a little slightly different color as well in the early spring. Really a fun plant. This one's gonna work zone six through nine. Now this one has a peachy color new growth to it in the early spring, which adds a little bit extra ornamental characteristic. With the fall colors going to more of that orangey kind of color too, it just adds an extra something in the garden. A great coral bark selection to add a unique shade of winter interest in the garden. We named this one after Tim. His wife makes all the money. Next up, yeah, off. <laughs> we got Cornus Cusa Venus. All right, guys, check this out. This is a great flower in dogwood. Uh, Cusas are excellent for the south. They're durable. Uh, they're, they're, you know, very disease resistant being Cornus Cusas. And this one is a large flowering form. And this is a selection that was developed by Rutgers University. It's a hybrid with Natalia and Cornus Cusa. And they created these crazy dogwoods that have large blooms. They're extremely hardy out there in the landscape. They perform well for people all around the country. And this is an outstanding tree with large white flowers that are some of the largest of any of the dogwoods. Great look at three gallons, guys. I've even seen some that are a little bit taller than this. I actually picked out some of the medium sized ones. So uh, you could expect some good sizes in these. Uh, just a great plant too, and a great time to be planting your dogwoods. Uh, this is a good one to get out in the landscape. Makes a great pairing with our Japanese maples. And it definitely brings that flower and in interest. I heard somebody in the chat the other day, they were saying, these guys have the best selection of dogwoods online. Uh, hey, I appreciate it. We're known for our maples, but we keep bringing the other plants. So guys, first time getting listed today on MrMaple.com, Acer Palmatum Glen Eugene Handy. Yeah, this is a very nice upright red, uh, selected by Gary Handy for having some of the best red colors late into the season, holding its colors extremely well. I would say this is kind of a competitor to something like Hefner's Red or Emperor One. 
Uh, very, very durable for him, and the color has been excellent in full sun and holding it extremely well late into the season. Uniquely, though, this tree has a Matsumuri style foliage, so this gives it something a little bit extra out there in the landscape, holding that red color out there in the garden. Uh, really new selection. You know, this is one of our first times having it here at Mr. Maple. Uh, really a cool plant. You should just think about having it in your garden. What you got next down there, bro? Uh, looks like next we got rainy day. If I look like I'm dressed because it's cold, it is. It's 20 out here today. The fun never stops here at Mr. Maple. Uh, we're anticipating spring, but we've got so many cool plants and it just doesn't stop. We're getting ready for spring all year long. Guys, we've got Acer Palmatum rainy day. Now, sometimes you may see this tree listed as rainy day variegated. It is like a Higashiyama style. It's got some white variegation of that reticulated style in the early spring. Uh, definitely a really unique Japanese maple. And I think this is probably the second time we've offered it here on Mr. Maple. All right, so leaf rainy day out slowly. Just like Higashiyama, you're gonna get your better colors in that spring garden. Great red fall color on this one. You know, smaller overall leaves, really excellent for that small area garden. Now this is an upright tree, but you're gonna get some excellent small leaves, making it also an interesting uh, tree for bonsai. And this would be a really good one for bonsai. I never really thought about that. It's got a really nice upright habit to it, smaller foliage. And this is just such a fun tree because it adds that extra element of variegation out there in the landscape. I mean, this style of variegation is one of my favorite styles of variegation of that Higashiyama style pattern. Uh, such, a, such a cool tree. I, I think there's some sort of differentiation between the Palmatum, which is like this, and that reticulation, and your Aminum style like the Ghost series. They're both similar, but they are quite different. Hey, if you've been saving your money for a rainy day, send it to us today. <laughs> All right, what's next down here? All right, guys, we're bringing back Geisha, gone wild and in some XLs. These are just our ones. You know, we were shocked to see this off our website, so we had to get it back quick. Geisha Gone Wild, always some of our top sales for the year. Awesome introduction by Talon Buckholtz. It's like Geisha, but it's done gone wild, y'all. So this was found as a sport on the cultivar Geisha. It's a little more upright. It's a little more sun tolerant, and it's a little more vigorous. Uh, definitely get some more reds in there, but this is one of the pinkest trees that you can grow out there in the landscape. Very similar to Shiraz, they were both sports off the cultivar geisha, but this was a selection by Talon Buckholtz that is probably one of the most popular trees that we do here at Mr. Maple. You know the difference between geisha and geisha gone wild? What's that? Geisha gone wild's flashier. <laughs> this is a cool tree. I love the pink that this can provide out there in the landscape. It's actually one of my wife's favorite trees, and I love it out in the garden as well. <laughs> Flash joke. <laughs> Only here on 10 of 10. All right, guys, we got Celebration coming back. Guys, Celebration is perhaps one of the best introductions by Talon Buckholtz himself. It's got a nice pink red uh, color that's a brighter red color than many of the other Japanese maples. It opens the world of Japanese maples to a whole new shade of red, which is just insane with the reticulation. I happen to notice that Santa Claus is number one tree, Corbin Claus out there, pick this up as his number one Christmas tree. Celebration is amazing, y'all. Uh, Guy Merlot and Talon Buckholtz would agree that this is one of the very best trees he's ever named. So some heavy hitters picking this. I mean, basically, you know this one. It is a pink, purple ghost. Excellent colors there in the landscape. Probably one of the most dynamic and showy trees we do. Awesome tree to pair with summer gold, with hot blonde, with anything yellow, because this intensity of color is outstanding. I mean, between this and Geisha Gone Wild, you could light up the landscape with some really pink red colors out there in the garden. Celebration with that reticulation. It's one of my favorite of the new ghosts. It is an outstanding tree. It's got a nice upright form, forms a nice upright tree, but still gives you that flash and flare out there in the garden. So it's gonna add that extra element that's gonna grab people's attention. And they're gonna say, what the heck is it? Tell them you got it a celebration and they can get it at mrmaple.com. Start your New Year's off with a celebration, guys. It'll be all cool in the gang in the garden. All right, we got a new one here. We hadn't offered this one much before online. Uh, we're bringing out Dixie Spirit. Now, this is a semi-upright tree, but we consider it more of a vigorous lace leaf. Uh, Dixie Spirit was an introduction by Mike Francis, just like the same one that named the Dixie Delight, a little bit of a Dixie series there. Dixie Spirit is an upright tree. We do find it to be semi-pendulous. So as it gets some height to it, it does tend to spread out from there. Uh, but stake this one up at first, you can get some very vigorous growth on a lace leaf. Now this is a very fast growing lace leaf. So if you're looking for a specimen that's gonna make a large size really quickly out there in the landscape, 
Dixie Spirits one you can definitely do it with. Pretty rare selection. Again, this is the first time it's being offered here at Mr. Maple. Hadn't seen it, been, it hasn't been offered too many places before, but definitely a cool tree to try out in the garden. Dixie Spirit, I feel like playing some Leonard Skinner, a little free bird. All right, guys, this one's gonna sell out quick, all right? Uh, it might sell out before I even say it, but you got until 10 a.m. We're bringing back the Trident Maple Acer Bajirianum Waco Nishki. Now, some of these have been cut back for sign wood for the Buckholtz farm. <laughs> we cut some of this out, melt it off, make sure we had some good stock plants out there. But this is a vigorous, upright Trident Maple. Excellent for bonsai, but when this tree leaves out, it's a pure white. Guys, plant this next to that celebration. It's insane. Again, leafing this out slowly is the best way to get some of the best whites to it. So a high oak canopy or a, an area where it's getting a little bit more shade that early spring is ideal. I've seen this one in Tom Cox garden, you know, 20 foot trees and they're as wide as the side of the greenhouse here. Blow your socks off, just incredible color patterns to it. Uh, Waco Nishki really brings it. Now I also like that it's a pink red in the fall. You get a real nice soft pink early to more of a bold red late. I don't even have to tell you bonsai guys, Trident maples work great. This would be a dope tree to see as a bonsai, especially in that early spring setting. And this tree just gives you that white in the garden in the early spring, like a Winayama gives that orange out there. I mean, the white that this gives is outstanding. It does go green midsummer, and that allows it to take the heat, especially in the south. So this performs well, even in, heat, in high heat settings, being a white tree, which is really unusual. Many nurserymen didn't realize that how heat tolerant Waco Nishki was gonna be until we actually started trialing it. And then we were, everybody was shocked how well this tree did. Just went to green a little bit earlier and performed outstanding in high heat settings. Uh, let us know what your favorite tree is, is here on the table today. Now don't forget guys, these are only 10. We have 10 more trees listing. There's a whole lineup on, in that email. So make sure to check your email. And we've got one more special tree for you here today. Guys, we got some three gallons and some three gallon XLs of liquid ambar variegata, also known as Ario variegata. It's got that yellow on splash variegation on a sweet gum. Pretty cool plant. This is a dynamic sweet gum, really adds a lot to the landscape. Sweet gums are fast growing. This one's very heat tolerant for a variegated form. It's gonna work up to zone eight. Excellent pattern to this one, guys. The, the show on this one is outstanding. And again, you know, I'm a sucker for variegated plants. So variegated sweet gum, outstanding color patterns on this one. I remember seeing this at Brian Up Churches and when we bought his place in 2013, Highland Creek Nursery, seeing this in the ground at his place. And I said, that's a tree we need to be producing. It just got that extra flash out there in the garden. A little bit of yellow splashes. Y'all know I love the color yellow. An amazing tree out there, really easy to grow. You know, there's not a lot that can go wrong with sweet gums and it's variegated, cool plant to have. All right, y'all, this is the trees for the 2024. Can you believe it's already 2024? We're coming out the gate swinging here in the new year. I hope you're enjoying this. Let us know in the comment section below what your favorite plant is on today's Tenant 10. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.